Hello, let's talk about social media. Social media is really interesting because it is something that I was never really into. And in fact, I was always kind of anti any technology when I first did my first summit, which was a few years ago now. It was really interesting because I had never really used a computer apart from putting CDs in and watching Bridget Jones. So when I decided that I was going to have an online business, I kind of um, more or less rolled into it, knowing that to create a summit, to create a platform so I could reach as many people as possible, I was going to have to start using social media. I'm not going to lie, there was a hell of a lot of resistance considering that most computers I ever touched had blown up. And I just liked my good old little Nokia, my real basic Nokia, which didn't really even have a screen. It was more like just for texting. So when I decided to actually go onto Facebook and start utilizing it for the gift that it truly was, so I could reach as many people as possible, um, I had I hit quite a few walls, to be honest. I wasn't sure how to use social media. I still am not 100% sure on how to use like Instagram or TikTok or all the other different platforms, email. Um, um, yeah, so, but I'm still a six-figure coach and I'm still very successful in my own right. And I have reached thousands and thousands of people with my email, with my um, my podcast, uh, with my social media and my Instagram and all the different things. So I want to challenge you today. I want to ask you some questions. You know, what is your truth about social media? Because I just shared with you a little bit about my truth about social media, the fact that I was absolutely petrified of it. And the first few uh, groups that I created, I think one was called Love, Light and Lightworkers, because I just realized that I had these abilities and I wanted to share them with the world. It was like, you know, when you wake up and you want to share it with everybody. And then I canceled it because I am dyslexic. So I couldn't even spell to save myself. I didn't know how to share. I didn't know how to find images on Google or um, let alone know what Canva was to create any type of graphics. So I was petrified of social media. Hello, Kiris. So what happened was, after many times of attempting to have Facebook groups and failing at them and cancelling them and starting different things and cancelling them, I started asking different questions. And that was, you know, do I even need social media? Do I need social media? And then I realized it wasn't a need. It wasn't a must have. It wasn't a I will fail if I don't have social media. It was a resource. Social media uh, Facebook, Instagram, emails, was a resource. And there's a hell of a lot of apps that we have, which are also resources. So we have Canva, uh, we've got Otter, there is Calendly, there's Calendar, there's all of these, there's photo things where you can, I mean, you guys know it, right? You can go into the Play Store and you can get a whole lot of free apps. You can even get Moon apps. Like, it is amazing. We have got so many resources that we can pull from with this little device called our cell phone. So I've got a computer behind me, I've got a cell phone in front of me, I decided I wanted to utilize this beautiful cell phone today because it is a resource that I can create a ton of money off and also a ton of change off. The gift of our resources, our cell phones and social media and the calendars that we have, the digital calendars, the voice messages, uh, messenger, we've got WhatsApp, we've got Voxer, all these things are free. But I still see people complaining about these free resources that we have been given. Yes, of course, you pay for your internet. Like, holy moly, we pay, what, 20 bucks a month or something ridiculous like that. That's a really pretty, that's a cheap business that you have right there, really. Um, we, we are actually being sold in a different way, which is what I want to tell you about, because we're not getting sold 
uh, with just because we're paying for our internet or buying our cell phones. Of course, there's different businesses making money that way, but it goes a little bit deeper. And this is where we must realize that we are here to utilize these resources, not these resources to utilize us, to use us. We're not here to be used. We're here to use them, right? Just like polarity is everything. You can be in a relationship and let your partner treat you like shit and use you if you want. But I'm sure you don't because you know your value and you know your worth, right? So let's ask these questions. Do you need social media? Do you need this in your life? Do you need your cell phone? You know, comment, let me know. Do you need social media? The simple answer is absolutely not. You do not need it, but you choose to have it in your life, which means you have boundaries around they may be loose boundaries they may be really tight boundaries but you have boundaries and you have your own rules on how you utilize this resource like everything we can be extreme with it or we could actually we can have like loose boundaries so we can be like real like extreme with our boundaries of like I only check my phone three times a day this is my business I use a lot utilize this we have no social media after six o'clock, whatever it is, you can be as strict as you want with that. Or you can be like, oh my God, uh, I've woken up, better check Facebook, I've woken up, better check my emails, I've woken up, is there any messages? And that, you're kind of being used then. You've actually brought into um, being sold as data, essentially. Are you being controlled by social media? Are you? Are you endlessly scrolling? And you're like, all of a sudden, you're in this trance, an hour's gone by. I have so many clients that say to me, oh my God, I scrolled for an hour. And, and then all of a sudden, I was like, I've been scrolling from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. It's just like driving in a car, right? So are you being controlled by social media? Are you looking at it and reacting to different posts when people are talking about different things? It might be the COVID thing. It might be... I don't know, you might have news pop up on your social media. You might have cars that you want pop up. You might have bodies, like maybe you're interested in um, hot bodies, you know, like maybe in self-image or fashion. Whatever you're interested in is going to pop up in your feed if you don't know that already. Sometimes we go, oh my God, social media, it's like it's psychic. It just pops up with all the exact truck that I want, the exact coaching course that I want, the exact all these different things pops up. But there's no mistakes because it's very cleverly engineered. So with the data that you're looking at, whether you're stopping for 30 seconds or even like for half a second more than you did on the post before, the algorithm in everything is figuring out exactly who you are, what you want and what to sell you. This is when you are starting to be used by social media. This is where you don't have the boundaries and you are looking at your phone too much. I want you to like go into your settings. There's somewhere in your settings that you can see how many times you pick up your cell phone. And you'd be amazed at how many people pick up their cell phone 100 to like 500 times in a day. Like literally people pick up their phones all the time. I don't exactly know the statistics, but I know it can be kind of crazy. People always going, where's my cell phone? Oh, where's my cell phone? I lost my cell phone. If it's not right with them in their pocket or in their hand, or if they're talking on it or they're talking on it or they're, they're texting on it or they're, they're doing stories or whatever it is. Like it's a part of our life and it, there's a beautiful part of social media, but just like with boundaries with our partners and with our relationships and with, um, our children and, of course, our jobs and all that type of stuff, we must have boundaries. We must have boundaries to know that other things aren't controlling us, that we indeed take the responsibility for how much we are scrolling and what we are looking at. People will come to me and they start searching on the web and they'll say, oh my God, there's just so much bad stuff in the world. And they start getting depressed and they start feeling like they're losing their shit. Literally, they're like, I don't know how, if I can handle seeing anything else. And I'm like, you do realize this is because this is what you've asked for by going down that rabbit hole. It's starting to come up in more in your feed. Negativity, people um, being super negative, like we call them trolls, right? Because what happens is you will know someone that's an acquaintance called a friend. They're not really a friend. They're an acquaintance that you may 
have known. You know, someone that you may have known at your school who you never actually talked to, but they look familiar and you friend them, right? So you have thousands of friends on social media. And that is great if you have a business and you want to reach lots of people, but too many of us are involved in other people's lives that we have nothing to do with. And you walk down the street and they walk past you and you don't even know who they are. You don't even say hello to each other, but you're commenting on their posts. It is insane, absolutely insanity how we've lost this human connection. But it doesn't have to be this way. If you are not being controlled by social media and you are clever about how you're utilizing it, in fact, it can be one of the best resources, like I said at the beginning, um, the best resources to create your business. So you can create that, that six-figure business or that five-figure business or that seven-figure business by utilizing this incredible resource and you don't even have to be techie. You can be seen and heard all around the entire world just by utilizing the simple yet very intelligent resource of social media. But too many of us go into our head of comparing and also of judgment of what we're seeing. And too many of us are not realizing that we have total control of what we see. So to give you an example of that, on my news feed, I never, ever, ever see anything negative. I know, it sounds totally crazy, but I do, I'm very aware if I'm scrolling, because I like to see what my clients are up to, of course, because I'm a business, a spiritual business coach, and here I am, and I'm scrolling, and I just don't stop, like, on anything, because if, the minute I stop on anything, especially if it's got a negative kind of um, undertone or whatever, more of that's going to pop up, more of it and more of it and more of it. Did you know that we are addicted to our emails? Because when you scroll down, it pops up and you might have a new one. And that's completely and utterly created. So we want more. We want to hit the jackpot by getting that amazing email or that amazing, someone's put a notification and it says notification. So you always go and click on the notifications. All of us are being used a little bit, um, but some of us are being used a lot. A lot. So how are you being used? And if you are, are you getting triggered? Are you getting triggered with what you're seeing on social media? Are you getting triggered with what people are saying? Uh, are you getting triggered of what's popping up? If so, you might want to actually start unfriending particular groups. You might want to start um, actually noticing what you're looking into and what you're clicking into because, of course, these computers are taking complete and utter note of who you are, <laughs> everything about you, where you live, what's going on in the area that you're living in. And just like television, you know, we have TV, and the TV will show the adverts for Taranaki or New Zealand or whatever because, of course, they would. They're trying to advertise to your area. And that is what happens on social media as well. No, no doubt. So some of the other questions. What is the gift that social media is giving you? Now, I love this because social media gives me signs and synchronicities. I look at my cell phone and I go onto Facebook and it's like 333 and I'm like, oh, thank you. You know, um, social media will, will pop up with particular things that I'm extremely interested in and it's a thing that I've been asking for. So, yay, it can sell me because maybe I was looking for that breath work. Um, it can... It tells me where my friend's birthdays are and my client's birthdays. So I can be like, happy birthday, yay. And so we can celebrate together. Social media is an absolute gift. And we have never had a time in this reality, in this, in this, you know, this the world that we're in, where we've had access to so much information. But with coming in of that consciousness, there's also an unconsciousness, which is the scrolling and this addiction. So the amount of times I go to a cafe with my children and I am watching a mother and her ch and the child and the, the, the child's looking at me and I'm winking and smiling and, and flowing love and stuff like that. And the mum is literally on their cell phone. I'm like, oh my God, is your cell phone more important than your child right now? They stop, they eat their cake, mum goes back on her cell phone. And I feel like going up to the mum and saying, hey, lovely, I'm not trying to judge you here, but 
hey, why did you even bring this kid out for a coffee date? Because you you didn't talk to your kid the whole time. And what I notice is the mother, she's been fueled up because she's just got all this information. The kid's just sitting there like, oh, yeah, this is interesting. So these children are missing out on actual connection because their parents are scrolling, right? This is where the boundaries are a little bit loose. So what can we do if we have loose boundaries? Well, I know from a lot of the Facebook creators and the guy who created Gmail, they've even had to put pl things in place for themselves. They're the creators and they know how addictive this stuff is. So a big thing is just having a room where there is no, no gadgets. There's no social media stuff. This is my office right now. And if I'm not sitting in here working, doing this type of stuff, I'm not on my cell phone unless I'm messaging clients. Um, I leave my cell phone in here, right? So I will not, sometimes I'm not even online for like three days. I just make sure that I have this detox from my cell phone, from social media. And at first it was really hard. And I just wanted to go out and just quickly check my messages in case a client messaged me. And then I realized, you know, 10 years ago, you had to wait till Monday to get to your messages when you went into the office, right? So we've just brought the office to us now. But we do not have to be on call 24-7. If you're looking at your cell phone and answering messages late at night and early in the morning because you feel like you have to get back to your friends, family, colleagues or clients, then maybe you want to look at your boundaries, Quite often, I like to message people at 5.30 in the morning if something's popping through. Um, and other times, I'm like, no, I look at my cell phone between 9 and 3. You know, that's what I do. I show up to my calls, and I try to live in this reality rather than in the digital reality. Some people are too much in the digital reality, and they're not even noticing their kids growing up. This is where loose boundaries are. So make sure you have a place where you do not have your cell phones on all the time. Get an alarm clock if you have to. Do not look at your cell phone first thing in the morning. Like wake up and allow your body to wake up, not go straight to the device. You know, too many of us do that. I know for me, um, I have a procedure. I wake up, I get out my cards, I get out my journal, and I literally... I'm literally like in myself and I look at myself and I'm like, oh, I just want to check that email. I just want to check that email. I'm like, no, because <laughs> I can see that there's a pattern there and I'm not available for that. Why am I not available for that? Because I am a fucking trailblazer and I'm here to help others. I am not available to be addicted to cigarettes or alcohol or social media. It's not going to happen. Sometimes I'm a little bit addicted to chocolate, but whatever. Okay, so what is the gift that social media is giving you? It is giving you signs and synchronicities. It is giving you connection. It is giving you connection to like-minded souls where you can experience things and jump on. Oh my God, it's so juicy. Social media is next level. Hello, Caroline. How, Caroline, I always say Caroline. I love you. Thank you for showing up today. So, you know, another question is, is social media allowing you to be distracted from what you should be or could be creating okay so how many times do we go okay i require to go to the gym oh whoops i scrolled for too long i can't be bothered now how many times do we require we, we want to make a big effort with our relationships you know we want to, our relationships to be next level or our businesses or whatever it is and then all of a sudden you're scrolling it's a perfect distraction. When we notice this, it is the biggest gift. Yes, socials are a distraction for me. Absolutely. And I think they're a distraction for every single person. And when you have the awareness that they're a distraction, then you're on top of the game because you're like, oh, I'm distracting right now. Cell phone down. <laughs> I had the awareness that I'm addicted to social media. Thank you, God, for telling me this. Now I'm going to put something in place where I have more boundaries around social media because it's a fun place to be. But it's not so fun when you get dragged into the drama, other people's drama. I never react to other people's drama on social media because they are playing the drama card or the victim card. I'm not doing it, right? If they private message me and ask me for help, I will uh, send them something or, you know, reply to them, but I'm not going to reply to it and play into the drama card of social media. It's just not going to happen. Therefore, I stop seeing it, which is fantastic. How can you let social media be a contribution to you? 
What contribution and gift is social media to you? Well, I, can t I can't say it for you. I can't speak for you, but I can tell you that I've got friends all around the world. And I can also tell you, even though I am not techy and I'm here sitting on my cell phone, um, that I have created my business through social media. Do I have tech issues? Absolutely. I totally have tech issues. If people judge me for them, then they are judgmental, whatever. I still show up. I may have had a few failed Facebook groups because I didn't know how to work them. But now I have lots of successful ones because I never gave up. I never gave up on myself. And I utilize this incredible gift and I say thank you for it. Just like I do for my food at night and for my children being healthy and my beautiful husband and my friends and the world and the sun and all the things. I go, thank you, social media. But how many of us are taking it for granted like we are just entitled to it? We're not entitled to it. It's a gift. A gift that we can use just like the newspapers used to be. But we used to have to pay a hell of a lot of money to advertise ourselves on the newspapers and then hope someone read it. This is a way that we can show up and be heard and seen to those who require to learn from us or grow from us. Whether you're a coach, whether you're a practitioner, whether you're a mum who just wants to share an awareness, whatever it is, this is a place, social media is a place that is a beautiful God-given gift to us to utilize and we can abuse it just like drugs, just like alcohol, just like any addictions. So how can you let social media be a contribution to you, right? Knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is a beautiful thing, but we must have balance in all areas. So if you are overusing the Facebook and it's starting to affect other people, just like if you're drinking too much alcohol, you know, and it's starting to affect other people like your children and they're going to get off your cell phone and you're like, just one more minute. <laughs> You said that there before, mum. <laughs> Put down the cell phone. Put it down. And you might find yourself looking at it on the bedside table. I just need to check it. I just need to check it. Then get it out of the room. Or do what I did and write down a schedule. Okay, so between nine and three, I check out my phone. Then later on, I might check it in an hour and get back to my groups and my clients. And then I put it down. Too many people come to me for spiritual coaching and like spiritual business coaching. And what actually happens is they're so petrified that they're not going to have enough time serving their clients. And then I tell them that I have four groups and I go in and I check the messages and I reply to people and I'm not really on social media for more than like an hour a day. And they're like, what? What do you mean? And I'm like, well, I'm not because I have to have direct focus and how I utilize social media so it can benefit me. Now, if you haven't watched The Social Dilemma, I believe it's on Netflix, um, please Please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if it's still on there. But The Social Dilemma is an incredible um, documentary created by the founders of like Facebook and Gmail. And they are telling you why it's so addictive. They're telling you why it's like a slot machine. That, and telling you there's a greatness about it. But also just like the human, <laughs> just like the human race, we we consume, we're empaths and empaths consume, we consume so much and we consume it and we consume it and we consume it and we overdo it and we become addicted. So stop letting social media totally rule you. Stop complaining about having social media and the shit that you're seeing and how you don't like seeing it. Just stop seeing it, right? Just stop seeing it. Stop buying into the drama and trauma and the shame and all the different things of this collective and start going, how can I be a trailblazer and be grateful for social media and my reality? So are you taking responsibility for your precious time? So if you feel like you may have a social media addiction, what you might want to do is actually, yeah, tap into how many hours or how much time you are actually on your cell phone. Right now I'm on my cell phone, right? But this is me working. This is going to be transformed into a podcast and possibly something else, who, who even knows. But I like to utilize my resources because I'm a projector, which means I'm not willing to work eight hours a day. I'm willing to work a few hours a day 
And within that few hours, I want to be on social media. I want to show up to my amazing group. So like Release Your Blocks, Magnificent Mediumship, all these different programs that I have. And I want to have enough energy for my children and my husband as well. So I'm going to utilize my resources and I'm going to take responsibility for my precious time. So I'm going to make sure I do human things like go for a walk and go to the gym and do all these different things and have control over my cell phone and how many times I look at that. So go onto your settings and have a look. How many times am I actually picking up your cell phone? And if you are picking it up like I do a lot because it's my job, make sure that you're really, really clever and on your home screen have an incredible photo or have like a, you could have a mood board or you could have a vision board. I have a vision board on mine and because I looked at it so many times in a day, unconsciously it goes into my brain and I create it. I got the dog I wanted, I got the house I wanted, um, I got the team I wanted, I got the money I wanted. I created all these amazing things because it kept going into my brain even though I'm not consciously looking at it because I'm swiping to unlock my cell phone. We're, it's crazy. It is totally crazy. Um, so are you taking responsibility? Are you taking responsibility for how you're utilizing social media? If you think that you don't have an addiction, and then good for you, but I would really ask it a little bit deeper because I know for me, it's really hard turning off my phone for 24 hours, you know? So awareness is key when it comes to social media. And yeah, I do that too with home lock. So good. Yeah, totally good. So what is the truth about social media for you? Just be cautious and just be aware, I should say it's a better word, of what you're seeing in your feed and what is triggering you. If people are triggering you, it's one of two things. It means it's something that you need to look in within yourself and take some responsibility for that because it's a beautiful, beautiful mirror. It's a beautiful mirror so you can transform right then and there. Or the other thing is maybe it's like this past version of you and you're, you've, you've gone past that, right? Maybe it's something that you don't want to look into anymore. Um, so, And it might be just a little sign of, hey, get off. Get off your cell phone. Go out, walk the dog. Go for a swim. Go for a walk with a friend. Um, go to the gym. I don't know, like just go read a book. You know, I've started reading books, which is a little bit harder for me being dyslexic, but I'm, I'm reading books because they're amazing and I don't want to be looking at my screen reading a book so I get a paper book it's amazing so what do you know what do you know signs and synchronicities right can pop up on social media of course they're going to because it's a resource that spirit's going to work through as well there is so many good things about social media and there's always a darker side to everything if you don't utilize social media for the positive vibes that it truly is, then you're going to be sucked into the dark side of social media. I don't see anything negative. I'm not available for it. I'm available to use this resource to reach thousands of people around the world with my message of truth, of how they can choose whatever it is they're desiring. And that is what I utilize it for. I am not good at social media, but I'm still a six-figure coach because I utilize it in the simplest, plainest way, which is pushing, start, or play, and talking without overthinking. Maybe a couple of notes. That's all I do. Of course, you can invite people to your groups and do stuff like that. That's simple structures and strategies, but there's nothing works if you don't have the energy behind it. I've seen coach after coach after coach fail and give up and they keep searching for more and more and more and more because they don't have the energy behind it because they think there's a secret. The secret is you. The secret is within you. Look at your boundaries. Take responsibility for the time, for your time, your precious time. Look at the joy around you, the children around you, the um, your beautiful things around you, the books around you, your partners, the resources like the beach, you know, and share, share the goodness that you desire to share. That is what the beauty of social media is. So be aware of those algorithms. And if you think that you've got a little bit of an addiction problem, you're not alone. And I highly recommend watching The Social Dilemma. And I would love to know what you guys think about it. Sending you so much love. 
Have a beautiful day and I will see you soon.